Good evening. I'm Haley Wilgus. And I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks for being with us. Our top story tonight, the search for a missing Sarasota family. A father and his three teenage kids were last seen Sunday morning leaving Sarasota, heading to Fort Myers on a 29-foot sailboat. Coast Guard crews say they have found some of the items they believe belong to the family about 33 miles off Sanibel. They are now concentrating their search area in that area. ABC 7's Kate Flexter joins us now live from Sarasota with the latest on this search. Kate. Haley and Scott, the U.S. Coast Guard tells us that the man and his three children were last seen on these waters. Apparently, they were living on a sailboat just offshore and headed south to Fort Myers on Sunday to repair the boat. Uh, on the boat was 45-year-old Ace Kimberly and his children, 13-year-old Roger, 15-year-old Donnie, and 17-year-old Rebecca. Now, that's when they ran into trouble. Kimberly called his brother Sunday afternoon and said they were in six-foot seas attempting to survive off the coast of Englewood. Now, the Coast Guard has launched a massive search effort and found a field of debris off the coast of Sanibel Island. In the debris, they, they found water bottles, shoes, six of the seven life jackets, as well as a kayak, all of which they believe belongs to the missing boaters. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family. I know this is a super difficult time for them, and, and we are uh, doing everything we can. It was really windy, um, and it was breeze from like the northeast and the east, so that actually blows you off offshore. So um, even if you did have an issue and you know you're out there, it's, it's blowing you away from shore. So you definitely have to be aware of the weather and what's going on. The Coast Guard tells us they don't have plans to hold any other press conferences for the rest of the day. Reporting live in Sarasota, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Kate, thank you. A little more details about that massive search underway for the Kimberly family. The search area off Sanibel Island is massive. It stretched from Tampa Bay past Fort Myers, and a lot of crews are involved in this. Aircraft from Customs and Border Protection, Air Station Clearwater, Boat crews from Fort Myers and Cortez and the Coast Guard Cutter Alligator. Officers from FWC and Lee County and Charlotte County Sheriff's Office also assisting in the search. Right now, the Coast Guard says it does not plan to call off its search once it's nightfall and that this is an open and active investigation. A big traffic headache in Sarasota at this hour. Fruitville Road just east of I-75 remains closed after a crash brought down a power line. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies have to close both east and westbound lanes of Fruitville while crews work to remove the line. The vehicle involved in the crash caught on fire, but the driver was not hurt. The accident also affecting I-75 traffic. The northbound off-ramp heading east is shut down. Deputies are asking drivers to avoid the area until repairs to the power line are complete and Fruitville is reopened. A follow-up now to the budget battle involving the Robert L. Taylor Community Center. The city of Sarasota asked the county to pay 60% of the center's operational costs, saying that was fair because 60% of the people who use the center live outside of the city limits. But last night, county commissioners turned down the city's request. Now the city may be forced to pay all of the $1.6 million needed to run the center. City commissioners plan to look at their options during budget meetings next week. Only a month after the State College of Florida Board of Trustees voted in favor of three-year contracts for new faculty, the board rescinding that decision. New hires at the college will have only one-year contracts for now. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo is here to explain. Dwayne. Well, Haley, one of SFCF's Board of Trustees admitting he made a mistake with a three-year contract. So the board is looking at future meetings to come up with a permanent solution. But in the meantime, these contracts are now in a transitional period. And so I was willing to say maybe we, we acted in haste and maybe we didn't look through all the possibilities. State College of Florida's board member Eric Robinson made it a point to administer some changes. So three-year contracts for new faculty is now history. What was voted in was that we were going to rescind the three-year contract. The decision was made in a 5-2 to two vote, and in place of it, the board will now revert back to faculty working under one-year contracts. We're back at the place we were before. But other board members felt this decision would hurt SCF in the long run. I believe the focus of the college should be uh, on the students and their education. We've lost focus. It could harm the college's ability to attract the kind of faculty that the students in the college are used to. 
Although Trigiero has some issues with one-year contracts, Robinson says it's only temporary. Okay, now, now we have to replace it with something else. And that something else, we need to include the faculty more in trying to decide what that replacement is. Robinson saying he's looking for the board and faculty to make some common ground in the next meeting. We may come back and say a three-year rolling contract, which would mean your contract will be automatically renewed. So you have that job security, you still have that three-year look back, but you have that sense of job security that you didn't have with that three-year static with an expiration date. And the board's next meeting is scheduled for August 23rd. Back to you. Thank you, Duane. A small disruption for staff members and students at Venice High School today. Venice Fire Rescue was called to the school this morning because of a gas line break. According to the fire chief, a backhoe hit a two-inch natural gas line in the back of the school. No one was hurt and the line was turned off. But some students attending summer programs were moved to the front of the school for pickup. Well, the humidity is creeping back in. Could you yes, feel it? Yes, I can feel it, yeah. unfortunately. Let's head over to Bob and get a check. Yeah, all good things must come to an end here in the summer. We are looking at this southeasterly return now around an area of high pressure, and this is going to continue to funnel moisture into our direction. We've had some showers around this afternoon. Uh, some of them have been pretty heavy rainmakers. Not a lot of lightning in our particular area, although there are some cells well east of the interstate starting to produce some of that. You can see that rain near the airport uh, right around 3 o'clock this afternoon, pushing off uh, toward Cortez and eventually off Anna Maria. Those are, for the most part, weakening. You can see that little sea breeze front uh, moving off uh, to the east right now, and that's where the storms are getting a little bit more intense near Mayaka City and Mayaka Head. There's a shower right there by Lakewood Ranch, uh, which is pushing off to the west right now. Heavier showers uh, into the inland areas right now, all those moving uh, to the northwest at 10. Right now at the airport, 84. The dew point, well, there it is, 74 degrees. That's where it belongs this time of year. More in our forecast for the rest of the week and into the weekend coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is discussing whether to hold another black bear hunt this fall. During a meeting in the Panhandle today, commissioners heard a staff recommendation in favor of another hunt that would take place in late October. The commission made a controversial decision last year to hold the state's first bear hunt in two decades. Diane Eggman is the director of hunting and game management for FWC. She says black bear numbers have increased substantially over the years, and the success of protecting the animals in recent decades now creates the need for a hunt. After our extensive review and analysis on this issue, particularly over the last year and a half, the reality is clear that hunting is an important tool in comprehensive bear management, and its use is grounded in strong science. Before the commission meeting started, about a dozen protesters gathered outside to oppose the hunt. Opponents say more money and effort should be spent on non-lethal ways of reducing human-bear interactions. If agreed to, the first hunting period would begin October 21st with two more four-day windows later in the month. A sad follow-up story now on an injured young sandhill crane. The bird that was found in Manatee County shot through the neck with a nail gun has died. Justin Matthews of Matthews Wildlife Rescue was initially called about the crane and found it off of State Road 64. Dr. Don's mobile vet for services in Nokomis performed emergency surgery on the crane, but it died a few hours later. No word on who may have shot the nail gun at this bird. Not sure the motivation behind that. I know, either. it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. It's very disappointing. Still to come in your Suncoast News, a big announcement from Marco Rubio days before the deadline to file for U.S. Senate re-election. And ABC7 Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your full weather forecast. And later in Health Smart, a drug that is already on the market could help prevent breast cancer for some women. That story is coming up. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. 
For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT Wingard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT Wingard impact-resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. Sometimes, when the course is difficult and you might take a step where you could fall, it's important to trust and ask for help. That's one of the most important things we learned at Tidewell's Teen Grief Retreat. On your grief journey, there are going to be difficult parts, but you have to trust in yourself and your support systems and know there are people around who will help you make it through. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. You know what scares me? No electricity. Yeah, when this magical box suddenly stops working, I call the pros at Mr. Sparky and they send a superhero to save the day. How's it going, Pablo? It's going great, Mike. Pablo possesses amazing skill. He can perform incredible feats at blinding speed. Superhero. Couldn't have done it without you. Modest, too. Call 888-8-SPARKY. Just to be clear, I don't live here. Pomero Shop Furniture. After 66 years in Sarasota, we're still the leader in hard to find and custom made furniture. We have literally thousands of fabrics and patterns to choose from and our free in-home design consultation will help you create rooms in your home specific to your unique style. Our inventory changes daily, so come in today to see what's new. Plus anything in our showroom can be part of your home the very next day. Pomero Shop Furniture, now with three locations. Hey, I'm really glad that you're taking a few moments to check out this video about the ministry of First Sarasota, downtown Baptist Church. I'm William Hill, lead pastor here at First Sarasota. For the last 15 years, it's been my privilege to share in the life of this faith community, a community that centers itself around faith, friends, and family. Indeed, it is a ministry that's been in existence right here in this wonderful city for over a century. We've been slow smoking over oak for more than 45 years. And while sticking to tried and true traditions is kind of our thing, it doesn't hurt to throw something new in the smoker every now and then. Come get some slow smoked chicken wings at Sunnet Barbecue. Order them as an appetizer or as part of a combo with pork, baby back ribs, or both. Starting at $10.99, Sunnet Barbecue, local pitmasters in 68. A big shakeup today, Marco Rubio announcing that he will seek re-election to the Senate, reversing his pledge not to run. The Republican senator's announcement marks a 180-degree turn from where he was just a month ago when he insisted he would give up his Senate seat at the end of this term. The decision instantly transforms an already competitive race and improves Republicans' chances of maintaining the Senate majority. Rubio issued a statement explaining his decision to reverse course, citing the Senate's power to, quote, act as a check and balance on the excesses of a president as a central reason. Many Republican colleagues encouraged Rubio to run, believing he's the party's best chance to keep that seat. Not so, says one of the Democrats trying to replace him. I was genuinely puzzled why anybody thought he was a plausible candidate for the president, because, frankly, he's so bad as a senator. And... And, you know, maybe if he showed up more often, he could get more things done. Rubio's entry into the race comes just two days before a Friday deadline for candidate filings. Politics always change. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's always something different, especially this year. Yep. Yeah, and, and weather uh, doesn't normally change much during the summer, yeah. but we've had a nice break as of late. Mm -hmm. You know, we had two very dry days, and, yeah. and now things are getting back to a more typical weather variety of showers and storms starting to pop up along the sea breeze front. Lakewood Ranch webcam showing the activity developing again across parts of uh, the west coast of Florida, and that is associated with the, some southeasterly winds that continue to uh, bring the moisture back and showers. And now on the radar picture showing some Pretty, heck, uh, pretty heavy activity down to our south, a little bit more lightning there. One cell in particular uh, just northeast of Wachula producing some lightning strikes. The showers have been moving through. They've been pretty heavy at times. I know I drove through one near US-41, which has now since dissipated, moving off the coast of Anna Maria Island. These contain some moderate to heavy rainfall, uh, but the one near Lakewood Ranch is starting to weaken as it makes its way to the west, and also some showers near Onico, and one shower right there along the Manatee River 
in northwest Braden, very light rain at that uh, point. Now that sea breeze has moved inland. That's why this activity is starting to spark up a bit and looks like well, Arcadia getting some moderate to heavy rainfall. Right now at the airport, uh, we have most of the rain has moved through. We're seeing some sprinkles there, 84 degrees. Dew point, though, is much higher at 74 degrees, and that's normal for this time of year. 91 in Jacksonville, it's 90 in Orlando, 88 in Miami, and 84 in Sarasota. So things have cooled where it's rained a little bit. Still hot in Mayaca City, though. Wachula at 90 degrees and 87 degrees at Lake Placid. Northport, you're at 90. So some showers expected to move off to the west this evening, and we'll keep a chance in, and then things quieting down tomorrow. Sunshine to start the day off, and then showers developing along that sea breeze front tomorrow afternoon and evening, and then making their way to the west. So we're going to get into this pattern. It will stay with us through the weekend, too. So a pretty good bet for showers and storms, mainly in the afternoon and evening, although we may see a few coastal showers in the late morning, uh, both on Saturday and Sunday. Well, it beats the heat, though. Boy, it continues out west where record high temperatures are anticipated again. An excessive heat warning from southern Nevada, southeastern portions of California, and west portions of Arizona tonight. As there's uh, some relief in sight, but still very hot there. Temperatures uh, hot in New York, 89 degrees there into the 70s over the Great Lakes, 100 in Wichita. So the heat wave kind of spreading off to the east right now, 94 in Oklahoma City and Dallas at 96. Atlanta checking in at 89 degrees now and 91 into Jacksonville. For tides upcoming, low tide will be at 10.07. That's the next to low tide for Sarasota Bay and a high tide at 4.20. Another low tide at 8.35. Sunset should be a good one, 8.28 and sunrise at 6.37. For boaters, on Thursday, not much of a wind out there. Southeast winds turn to the west late in the day. A light chop on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now a warm, 86 degrees. This should not read 99. It should be 89 degrees uh, for the beaches and the UV index at 10. So tonight, expect a few evening showers around and then otherwise partly cloudy skies. Not everyone's going to get the rain. It will be warmer too. Uh, low temperatures into the mid 70s and east winds at 5 to 10. For tomorrow, partly cloudy, mainly afternoon storms, uh, scattered storms around a 90 degree high temperature with northeasterly winds 5 to 10. And the seven day forecast, look at that. Uh, sure looks like summer to me. A good chance for showers and storms all the way through Wednesday of next week with high temperatures right around 90 and low temperatures into the mid 70s. Back to you. In health news tonight, a new stud study could bring hope to women who have the BRCA1 gene that increases their risk of breast and ovarian cancer. Analyzing breast tissue prone to cancer, Australian scientists found that a protein that fuels precancerous cells also causes osteoporosis, and it can be stopped with a common osteoporosis drug. When dismubimab was applied to the tissue, precancerous cells stopped dividing, and when used on BRCA1 mice, two-thirds of them developed developed no tumors. A worldwide human trial should be starting within two years. Exercising a few hours after learning something new may help you retain that information. Dutch researchers and participants work on a task of matching locations with pictures. Then one group did no exercise, another worked out immediately after, and the third group exercised four hours later. That third group remembered significantly more information on the follow-up test. Activity in the hippocampus, a part of the brain associated with forming memories, was very similar among people in the delayed exercise group. When newly learned information turns into long-term knowledge, it requires certain brain chemicals that are also released during physical exercise. Good news, Americans are adding more whole grains, nuts, and seeds to their diets, and they're cutting back on sodas and sugary drinks. In a study published in JAMA, the percentage of Americans with poor diets based on the American Heart Association standards dropped from 56% to 46% from 1999 to 2012. The proportion of people with ideal diets was pretty low, but inched up to one5 from less than 1% previously. While these changes point to some improvements in eating habits over the past decade, many people still eat too much sugar and processed foods and not enough whole fruits and vegetables. Up next, a successful rescue mission into one of the most hostile and remote places in the world. And 50 years in TV. Meet the anchorman who is breaking records. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5.
Did you know? You can make an instant harness by simply wrapping the leash around your dog's chest and up through their collar. Contact Canine Corral today about a no-pull harness that will make you smile. Canine Corral, where the love is. This Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Minute is brought to you by Sarasota Ford. Each year during the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival, local fishing enthusiasts, boat captains, and government agencies volunteer their time to take more than 80 special needs clients out for a day of fishing on Sarasota Bay. It's called the Friendliest Catch. After a day on the water, every participant is a winner and recognized during a special lunch and awards presentation held at the Sarasota Sailing Squadron. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford because Sarasota Ford guarantees you our lowest price on every new Ford every day. Save on America's best-selling truck, 39 years running, the Ford F-150. Fusions, Escapes, over 800 vehicles on-site or online, all on sale. Buy with 0% for 60 months. And now, get up to 2,000 trade assistance. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301, sarasotaford.com. I'm Dale Mast, and we're celebrating 40 years on the west coast of Florida. It's our 40th anniversary, and it's time for a celebration, the Culligan Hydration Celebration. For a limited time, celebrate by taking $250 off any Culligan home system. That's $250 off Culligan water softener systems, drinking water systems, or whole house water filters. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary, and remember... For better water, pure and simple, call today and say... Hey, Culligan man! Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. The ability to go to college on a Bright Future scholarship gave me personally the flexibility to chase a dream. To not have to worry about paying for your college education was absolutely amazing. One step better than that was to leave with no loans. I mean, to start a life, to start a job, to, to start without having a debt was, uh, was amazing and it allowed me to get to where I'm at today. Now to a risky journey to the bottom of the world to rescue a sick worker. A special aircraft designed to fly in extreme cold weather flew a worker in need of urgent medical treatment from the research center at the South Pole. Right now it's the middle of the Antarctic winter where it's dark for 24 hours a day and temperatures average minus 70 degrees. It's so cold the plane's fuel needs to be heated up. And the station so remote, only two evacuations like this have been attempted in 60 years. Officials say everything is at the mercy of the weather. One minute, it can be still and you think that the weather is fine. Half an hour later, it can be blowing 40 knots and you can be in a blizzard. The name of the sick worker or their condition have not been released, but the National Science Foundation says the worker is an employee of Lockheed Martin, which provides logistical support at the station. A second person may have been evacuated as well. Hot weather and drought are fueling a massive wildfire in Southern California. More than 1,000 firefighters are battling the two fires, which are now being referred to as the San Gabriel Complex Fire. Although they haven't merged together, they have burned nearly 5,000 acres so far. More than 700 homes are under a mandatory evacuation. Temperatures were in triple digits yesterday. Residents in that area are being advised to keep an eye on the news in case new evacuations are necessary. We are delighted to confirm that you have successfully achieved a new Guinness World Record title. After nearly a half century on air, an ABC anchorman is being recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest running local TV news anchor in the world at the same station in the same market. This is someone I watched growing up in Houston. Dave Ward has been anchoring at KTRK in Houston for 49 years. He started there as a reporter and a photographer, and in the 1966, he started anchoring two years later after that. He says he didn't set out to make a career out of one TV station, but that's the way the game evolved. I didn't have to go anywhere. I could stay right here and experience everything there is to experience in broadcast television. 
In just a few months, Ward will make 50 years at the station with no official plans to retire. Before him, late L.A. anchorman Hal Fishman held the longest on-air record. He was on air from 1960 to his death in 2007. God bless him. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny when you see the people. There are several anchors still in Houston who I mm -hmm. watched growing up who are still going yeah. strong. So, Good for them. yeah, way to go. Well, still to come on your Suncoast News, how's Democrats fight for gun control? Rise up, Americans. This cannot stand. We will occupy this floor. We will no longer be denied a right to vote. Lawmakers stage a sit-in demanding their voices be heard. The ongoing fight between the Democrats and Republicans coming up next. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G. Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Getting older shouldn't mean giving up all the things she loves to do. It should just mean, well, finding new ways to do them. Right at Home's professional team thoughtfully selects caregivers to provide help with personal care, housekeeping, and of course, meal preparation. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, and it tastes good too. <laughs> we can provide the right care right at home. If you have a suspicion for harboring prostate cancer, we have a way of diagnosing by using an exquisite instrument called three-dimensional color flow power Doppler ultrasound. Using this system, we can identify abnormalities within the prostate that you could otherwise never detect. The Detoli Cancer Center is the only center in the southeastern United States which has this technology. If you have prostate cancer, we will find it. Pomero Shop Furniture. After 66 years in Sarasota, we're still the leader in hard to find and custom made furniture. We have literally thousands of fabrics and patterns to choose from and our free in-home design consultation will help you create rooms in your home specific to your unique style. Our inventory changes daily, so come in today to see what's new. Plus anything in our showroom can be part of your home the very next day. Pomero Shop Furniture, now with three locations. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. We've been slow smoking over oak for more than 45 years. And while sticking to tried and true traditions is kind of our thing, it doesn't hurt to throw something new in the smoker every now and then. Come get some slow smoked chicken wings at Sonny's Barbecue. Order them as an appetizer or as part of a combo with pork, baby back ribs, or both. Starting at $10.99, Sonny's Barbecue, local pitmasters in 68. 